If you love classic cars, then Donald loves you. Well, this thing is hysterical, you know? I am not a Hummer guy. I always thought You were not was... a Hummer guy? I thought you and Arnold were Hummer guys together. Not, not, no, you know, to me, the original Hummer with the rolling cold and blowing smoke and just... It just seemed to be taunting people who don't like cars already. You know what I mean? <laughs> it just seemed to be... And yet, I like the American solution to a problem. Like smoking. When it... When, when, Rather than quit smoking, they come out with cigarettes that didn't have smoke, or didn't have something, or has a, something, so you can still smoke while not smoking. You it's know? a substitute, not the replacement. Right, right. The idea that you have this Hummer, it's too big, it's too wide, it uses too much gas. All right, uh, let's keep it wide and big, but not use gas. You, you, know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you, <laughs> rather than just come out with smaller vehicles, I, I, I don't know, I, I'm not sure what I'm trying to say, it just makes me laugh. Because I do like this. I realize it eliminates the problem people have with these. Oh, it uses too much fuel. It's wasteful. Well, it doesn't use fuel at all anymore. It's electric now. Well, the thing that's really interesting about this Hummer EV to me is the fact that, as you know, I'm not a big fan of electric vehicles, except in certain cases. And that's because the engine is so much of a part of what I enjoy about the driving and riding experience. But it's interesting. In a vehicle like a Hummer, you're not in it for the engine, you know. It's not like a, a Lamborghini LM002 where you want to hear the V12 while you're in the silly big thing. Right. And the other strange thing about this, and it'll be interesting to see how I feel when I'm behind the wheel, is that it's really tall, it's really wide, but sitting inside, it doesn't feel as tall and wide as it does when you're standing outside of it. Yeah, that is true. It does shrink around you. I mean, all the electronic power steering brake it all lessens your it, it, it tricks your mind to thinking it's it's pretty lightweight but it's not i mean exactly you're, you're moving five tons this is ten thousand pounds it's which, astonishing yeah the uh the other thing which is very interesting to me as well is the design of this car the interior is really designed, every piece of it, somebody looked at, it's got elements like double stitching, it's got all of this engraving in the, in the, in the moldings, and uh, of course this giant screen with great piano switches underneath, it's sort of something from every design genre is here in this interior somehow. Right, right, but the idea is you really do have to have quality, what do they call it, ergonomics? Yes. The idea of pressing a switch and it, it, you know, have to press it twice to get it to click. Those are the things that really annoy people. It, it's sort of like the broken window theory of crime. You right. know, the idea that if there's a broken window in your neighborhood, you think, oh man, this is turning into a bad neighborhood. So you, you fix, fix it immediately? You fix that window immediately. Right. Like getting rid of graffiti immediately, you know. So I'm amazed at how far American interiors have come. They're, I think they're more than matched the Europeans, you know. In the old days, you bought a Mercedes or Jaguar, you know. I guess it started with the rich Corinthian leather, that phony baloney. <laughs> and, and the wonderful uh, separate floating pillows. Uh, yeah, yeah. Seats, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those always, those always <laughs> made me laugh. Those always made me laugh. It's interesting, too, because, of course, <clears throat> electric cars, all, all cars today, but especially the electric cars, make a big deal of the display screens because we're also addicted to our tablets and phones and right. all of this so there's this huge touch screen in the middle of the cabin and the way the dash is designed it seems as if the whole thing should be able to slide across yeah. and, and all that who knows maybe in a future edition it will uh, some sort of uh, autonomous uh, Hummer EV but you know it's it funny it that you say about uh, the engine and you know, the old days, my mother knew nothing about cars, but she knew with her 1960 Valiant, if it didn't start, you open the hood, took off the big round thing, put the screwdriver in the tiny round thing, kept that little butterfly thing open, and then tried to crank it, it would probably start. You know, and that's what she did. She never knew what mm -hmm. it even did, but that's what it, you, you had to, you know, with modern cars, there's no 
relationship with the engine and and the driver anymore in terms of I always prided myself in being able to get a car home. We talked about mm -hmm. this once before. The idea, I, I like carburetors because I can get gas in it and I can get it to spark. Okay, I know I can get that spark right. to light the gas. And I can at least hear it chug, chug, chug. Okay, it's running. I got it to run for me, you know. With modern cars, that doesn't happen at all anymore. They I mean, work or they don't That's work. right. I mean, I met a, a friend of mine who bought a car and I asked, is that front wheel drive? And he goes, what do you mean? <laughs> he didn't know for wow. sure because he's not a car guy. Yeah, you know, in the same way, if you and I went to buy a washer dryer, we don't really know which that agitator is that a centrifugal is. Uh, agitator right. or a cylindrical agitator. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so that's where you are with cars nowadays. Yeah, the idea of oh, when you open the hood of a V16 Cadillac, ooh, <laughs> I mean, it was impressive. Yeah, because it was the first styled engine compartment in the sense that you had chrome. Uh, conduits with the wires underneath going right. to, you know, it, it was just an, just an impressive piece of machinery. It's like opening the back of a watch and, and people took great pride in that. But nowadays, nobody opens the hood of a car anymore to look at the engine because you can't see anything. And in most supercars, you can't even open the hood. It can only Correct. be done by the dealer with some sort of special, special tool. tool. Right. Although I still like looking at the engine compartment and I do see a trend to less of the uh, foreign plastic cladding over the engines. People right. are making the engines look more like engines, even when you can't get to them, right. you know, in a Lamborghini or, or something like that. You can still see that they, you can see intakes, you can see uh, cam covers, I mean, so that you know that there's something mechanical underneath. But it would be interesting to see what, you know, I was talking with a, I was in a restaurant the other day in, in California, and there were two screenwriters there and they were writing a movie, and they he said, hey, you know cars, and what's a good car chase movie, you know? What's, mm -hmm. what's a good, what, what makes up a good car chase? And uh. I said, well, you know, there's a new era. If you're doing a new kind of film, to me, I said, do you ever think of, instead of having a noisy car chase, you have crooks chasing each other in electric vehicles, they're literally, <laughs> where, the, where they're zipping through traffic, silent, nothing. You know, and just and the noise is all around them, but they're, right. you know, the poli huh. the police are like, where are they? And they go by because they don't hear them coming. You know what I'm saying? I just said, do you ever think of writing a film? And they thought, oh, they thought, they, I don't know whether they used it or not, but I, I just thought it was an intriguing idea because that's what it will be. You know, I, I took one of these Hummers out to the desert in California. And, yeah, and, that's, and, and another, that's another question I had. Is yeah. How capable is this vehicle? when we're not on a road like this in the country. Well, it's very capable in the sense that you can crab walk with it and get yourself out of situations. But the thing that impressed me was, I'm way out and I see a deer and I go right by the deer. The deer just watches it. Doesn't run away. There's no smell. No, no smell. No smell. And the other thing was, at some point I'm, you know, I'm in the desert and there's nothing around. And I, I'm going along with the windows down, and I hear, ring, 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 ring. I hear some dirt bikes. So far in the distance, I can't even see them, but I was annoyed by it. <laughs> you know, if I had been in a normal Hummer, they, the noise of my engine, I wouldn't have heard them. But I they thought, had pierced your desert stillness well, in a Hummer. Well, that's what I mean. But I said, <laughs> I said to myself, why am I annoyed by that noise? You know, and I think that will be the future. I think you'll have a, another, if not this generation, possibly the next one where silence is the most valuable thing about a car as opposed to making noise. Well, you know, we've conditioned to the point where you and I love the noise, but there might be a generation of people who didn't grow up with it, find it annoying. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, but to, truth, to tell the truth, auto manufacturers have also been trying to reduce or eliminate noise from the early 20th century. I mean, right. one of the things you talk about the Cadillac V12, and V16, right. those cars were made to be smoother, smoother right. and quieter. There's probably no internal combustion gas engine smoother than a Packard 12, Right. you know? And uh, how many times have you been standing next to a, one of those running and say, is it running? Right, right. And right. Uh, you know, we'll try to start it when it's already running. And that the old ad, at 60 miles per hour, the loudest thing in a Rolls Royce is the sound right, of the clock. Right. Um, so there, there has been silent running before, but it's very interesting also. You and I, um, on Jay Leno's Garage, did a, um, a feature on the Tesla Roadster, the original Tesla Roadster right. based on the, uh, the Lotus. 
And at the time, I observed the fact that I didn't mind as much riding in an electric sports car because there was so much wind noise and tire noise. He still right. had a sensation of speed, right. even though the engine itself was not making that sound. And it's interesting, in this vehicle, it's really quiet. We can hear the air conditioning and also the tires because the tires are big. Right. So you're getting a little bit of tire whale uh, ring. I don't know what you call it. Yeah. Um, which also, I think, again, sort of satisfies a little bit of that I need to hear something so that I don't think that I'm sort of being wafted along in a video game. Plus, you're psychologically attuned to realizing that releasing noise releases power. Right. You know, which is, <laughs> you know, you uncap a muffler, and I meet people all the time. I took the mufflers off. I think I got another 50 horsepower. No, you got maybe one. But the idea, the idea with internal combustion engine is to get as much heat out of it as quickly as possible. Right. And the faster you get the heat out, uh, the more powerful it's going to be. I mean, you know, like Harley Davidson's loud pipes somehow make it seem faster. It's not. It's probably slower with the way modern engines are now. But psychologically, there's something there, you know? Yeah. How many times do you encounter on the road or the highway a very small car with a really big right, right. Uh, exhaust pipe and muffler and right. making a lot of noise. They're not going very fast, right. but I'm sure inside the car it must feel like they're going 200 miles per hour. Right, exactly. So there's a... You know what's funny? Because speed is the only new sensation of the 20th century. Yes. You know, if you put a baby on the hood of a car and go 60 miles an hour, <laughs> it'll laugh and giggle. Right. But you take the same baby and put it in the dark in a room and turn out the lights, it'll cry. Why? Because it's conditioned. Yeah. Darkness is scary. Whereas speed, there's no inherent, at least. Speed is joy. Yeah, exactly. On your bicycle, the first time you ride a bicycle, right, you feel right. the wind you know, in your face and you're, you pedal a little faster, you get a little more. But, so it's, but uh, there's no hereditary fear if that's right. such a thing, you know. This is uh, really, really interesting, and uh, the most fascinating thing, I just keep coming back to it, it's a really big vehicle. I mean, it, it's got I mean, I, for, I, could, for five. I could barely punch you in the face from here. That's how wide <laughs> another this thing good, is. Another good reason yeah, uh, exactly. to ride this car, because Jay can't punch me in the face if he loves to do And it's incredibly fast. That's what it's like a building racing down the road. <laughs> you know, it's like you're in a, a small mini mart, and you're just... <laughs> going 80 miles an hour. Yeah. This is, I mean, uh, from a standstill, it's good. Once it's rolling, boy, it picks up speed quickly. Which, again, is one of those things that uh, a lot of people talk about the accelerative properties of electric vehicles, which is great. But I always come back to the fact that I want a car that makes me want to look for green lights, not red lights, so I can stop and accelerate. Right. And I like the fact that, that it does have that sort of mid-range that's the thing yeah. that, that, that uh, I really look for in any vehicle. But I think it's fair to say this is the future. Well, I think it's a future, yes. I still believe that there is a future for internal combustion vehicles, hybrid vehicles, um, using uh, well, that's the great thing sustainable about it. fuels and all that. Yes. We'll have a mix. I mean, the, the car was not the death of the horse, it was the savior of the horse. Right. There are more horses in America now than there were during the Civil War, and they're all used for recreational purposes and for beauty and for entertainment as right. opposed Enjoyment. to beats of burden. You know, the idea of a, a, a junkman's horse dropping dead from heat stroke and cutting the reins and leaving the dead carcass in the middle of New York City, which happened all the time, you know? And I think what will happen is your Ferrari and your uh, Cobra or whatever it might be, or MG, you'll use on weekends. Go up in the hills, have a good time. But for day-to-day -day journeys, you would use an electric vehicle because who wants to sit on the 405 and a 426 Hemi, you know what I mean? <laughs> You're sitting back, 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 and the heat that's coming off and every other conceivable thing, you know? So this is, uh, I, I find this a fascinating answer. Rather than just eliminate the vehicle, let's make it Let's, what what are the problems people have with it? Okay, it's too big. Okay, they made it a little smaller. It wastes fuel. Okay, it doesn't use fuel at all anymore. It's noisy. It doesn't make any noise. Oh, that's okay. And then you drive and you go, because I think you said the other day, this thing is as quiet as a Rolls Royce. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, I'm looking forward to see what it's like behind the wheel. Yeah, let's give it a shot. Here, you want to try it? I will.
So, Donald, what do you think? Well, Jay, it's very interesting. From the passenger seat, this Hummer seemed to sort of shrink around me. Now that I'm in the driver's seat, it's gotten slightly bigger. <laughs> I think the part of it was getting out of the truck and walking around it and realizing how incredibly vast this vehicle is. Yeah, it is. There is an ocean liner effect here. <laughs> it's, uh, it's also slightly disconcerting. The smoothness is wonderful, but the electronic steering, I think, is a little light. So I sort of want to feel more... Actually, no, it's fairly well weighted you know, in the corners. No, I think that's classic American. The yeah. idea is, you know, it, this is supposed to be for a 300-pound man or a 110-pound woman. Right. So you've got to have something that, you know, appeals to both. And I think the controls are, are weighty enough to... Because it makes you realize, oh, I think the psychological effect, if it's heavy steering, oh, my God. But it doesn't feel like 10,000 pounds. Exactly. Anybody I mean, to, driving this would think it was 4,500 pounds. To your point, it is inconceivable driving this this way that this vehicle weighs what it does. Because it, right. it feels much, much, much lighter. Right, right. I mean, I've driven a lot of uh, sort of medium-sized pickup trucks that feel a lot <laughs> heavier yeah. than this. And they probably weigh, you know, 5,000 pounds. Um and I remember there was a, uh, in some states, you got a tax break for vehicles that weighed over 6,300 pounds and used it as a work vehicle. Right, right. And I remember a friend of mine buying a Bentley Continental GT right. because it weighed 6,200 pounds. So he commuted to work in it and it was... Uh, uh, really? Yeah. It weighed 6,200 6, pounds. Wow. Which was astonishing. And driving that car, you felt every one of those pounds. Right. Um, but this is really amazing. It almost makes you want to start to start to toss it, which you know you can't. Um, well, you can, actually. Can you? Yes. I mean, it's, you know, it's a bit like a motorcycle. You, you, you see a, a, a Goldwing or a BMW Cruiser, and you go, oh, boy, the thing weighs a 1,000 pounds. But the, the weight is all down low, so you can balance it. Ah, on so yep, you go, oh, enough. Th this is easy enough. You, you might not be able to pick it up, yeah. but <laughs> you, can, you can balance it easier. And the same thing with this. Everything here, everything is below the axle. You yeah, know? That, that also gives you a sense of security that right. uh, you wouldn't have in, in something else. And this is the kind of uh, vehicle. The last pickup truck I owned was a Ford Ranger step right. side that I used to tow my vintage race car. And this is the kind of vehicle that, because it also has great towing capacity, I understand, as well. Yes. Um, this is the kind of vehicle that, you know, you could tow across the country and be really comfortable, you know, because it's not tiring to drive. No, it's very relaxing to drive. And, you know, as we've always said, for new technology to succeed, it can't be equal. It's got to it's be, be superior. Yeah. And A, maintenance costs are lower. You get incredible mileage in terms of uh, you're buying electricity instead of gas, but you, it's maybe a tenth of the price. If this was a gas Hummer, it would cost oh. you minimum 150 bucks a week to run, right? It, minimum. Yeah, minimum. Now and you're that's probably, if you didn't drive very much yeah. and all that was highway driving. Now you're about maybe, what, $20 a, a week, something like yeah. that. Yeah. We're showing right that. now, we haven't driven very much. We're showing right now 308 miles of range. Right. Um, which is incredible. Which is pretty good. It's further than I can get before I need a personal break. So. And um, if you have... Uh, solar power at home you can actually cut your costs even more so have you made any long trips in an electric vehicle so that you know you sort of have to plan the trip to make well the longest charging, trip so lunch or so longest like trip i when i i bought my will st Clair mm -hmm. out in it was out in the desert in san diego so it my old tesla had a range of like 220 uh-huh and it was like 98 miles or something, 110 miles there. So I didn't want to. So I drove it down and then I went to the supercharging station, mm -hmm. which was free. Okay, it was 16 minutes or something like that for an 80 was on charge. I went and I had a hamburger and a Coke. Right. And when I came out, it was like, um, oh, sir, you have to, we're going to start charging you if you keep it here any longer. Oh, oh, yeah. Because I it, it charged up, so I thought, okay, that was impressive. Because they find you if you sit there all day, right, you know. So, 
Okay, and I thought, well, that wasn't bad because if this was, if I was driving uh, a, a full size sedan, it would be minimum sixty bucks in gas at sure. least. And you know, the great myth of the internal combustion engine, you know, your mileage may vary. It really does because a cars they time. advertise is twenty four miles per gallon. When I drive them around Newport, I look at my gauge. It says fourteen four. Yeah, I mean, it's, six, it's the yeah. uh, plus. Of course, you are an enthusiast driver, sir. So you're not likely to get the the um, the egg under the uh, under the the sole of the, the the shoe on the gas pedal. Right, right, right. right, right. <laughs> yeah. Be making omelets all day. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but you know, that's an interesting thing about sort of looking at travel in a different way. Um, you know. 80 years ago, if you were making a long trip, you would plan for long stops for oil changes, checking the water, changing tires, all those things that we take for granted today. Right. And uh, so today, generally, the long distance trip in the internal combustion car is you sort of dash through, you stop, you fill up with gas, you continue your trip. And this way, if you've got to stop for lunch anyway, you stop for lunch and charge the car. Right. So it's something that you do. And um, that does get into infrastructure. But, you know, there was a time, as, as you pointed out, there weren't gas stations. You know, you stopped at a uh, hardware store and right. bought uh, kerosene or whatever you need to do to put into your Model T uh, to keep it going. My personal opinion is that there will be spots in the market that will be almost totally electric. Yes. For smaller cars, for people that take shorter trips, because most people don't make long trips with their cars, quite frankly. Right. They have very, very powerful cars if they drive 30 miles a day. Right. Um, and then there will be other segments of the market that will be hybrid sure. uh, cars, generally performance cars of some sort, um, cars that uh, have another kind of utility. And then there will be the internal combustion cars that will be like the, the, the sort of the, the race horses or the dressage horses. Right. Um, and each of them will have their niche and um, find their own specific market. Again, I just come back to the fact over and over again that we've done a really lousy job over the years predicting the future of the car. So let's see what happens. We, we predicted the end of the convertible. We predicted the end of, of horsepower. We predicted all these things, and they haven't happened. Well, it's impossible to predict the future. I remember when I was a kid, the future was going to be instead of a meal, you'd just eat, take a pill. Yes. <laughs> you know, the, 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 the hamburger We'd all be astronauts. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, and we'd all drink Tang, and <laughs> it would be all that kind of thing. I remember when I was in uh, the fourth grade, a guy from Bell Labs came in and told us, by the time we were grown-ups, no American would be further than one mile from a telephone. No matter where you were <laughs> in America, there would be a phone within a mile, so you could... And we just thought, well, that's unbelievable. What about the desert? Yes, there'd be booths, and you know, uh, phone booths would be everywhere. Well, you don't have phone booths anymore, you know. <laughs> I mean, to me, the greatest thing is when I watch science fiction movies from the 50s, and they have a flying saucer, but it's got antennas all over it. Right. Well, well it's, nobody uses it. Nobody knows what an antenna is anymore. You know, the technology changes so fast. <laughs> the fun thing to me about technology is the most advanced technology is always used for the worst. For example, ah. when satellite, the idea of beaming a live event from Australia to America via satellite live, right. you know, going up, was a wrestling match. It wasn't a speech about world peace or some UN conference. It was like, you know, the Iron Sheik versus somebody else. And well, that, this is important uh, things that people need to, to know, That's Jay. right, exactly. But yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's what's fun about it. I mean, same thing with porn. Oh, you, it, porn, that's porn, what Porn made the internet, there's no yeah. doubt about it. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It, it, actually, porn made VHS tapes. But the, um, the other thing which is uh, interesting on a slightly uh, more PG note, the other thing is that the first um, hybrid cars that I saw and drove, it was a very big deal to sort of play the game of, of how can I make the, uh, the display most impressive? How can I get the, the right amount of charging, recharging, right. uh, power use? And I'm actually finding, looking at all the display and display choices, like every modern car today, you've got a million different uh, choices for displays. I'm not paying attention to them. Right. You know, it's it's they're there. I'm not trying to play that game of, uh, as as one writer so beautifully put it, 
um, driving the car as if I'm towing an invisible trailer of crystal chandeliers. Right, you know, right. Get the perfect balance of, uh, of of energy use. It's a vehicle. I'm using it. That's like I use an internal combustion car. I don't look at the gas gauge every moment I'm driving it. Oh, I see. That's just telling me what's the... Uh, ah, it's giving me a drift angle. Nail it. I mean, it accelerates nicely, doesn't it? It accelerates beautifully, and it's very smooth. It's not, uh, I have to say this, that, you know, you put your foot down in the, uh, in the Tesla Plaid, yeah. and it knocks you into the seat. Right. But this is just sort of pleasant, brisk acceleration. Right. Which I think is really terrific. And I have to say, to, to use the word handles well, I think is a bridge too far. But, you know, it, it, it feels more wieldy now than it it did when I first got Well, it's a bit like Square Nancy with the fat lady. The fact that it does it at all <laughs> is amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> I mean, oh my God, it's amazing. Look how light on her feet, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, it doesn't feel like a big truck, even though it is a very big truck. Um, and that, I think, is an amazing thing in and of itself. Yeah, it's like I used to say about my old friend Louis Anderson, the comedian. Yeah. He carries his weight in a dignified way. Exactly. You know, he he never did the sloppy fat jokes. He right. was, he was a big guy, but his suit would look nice, and he would have a tie, and he would very mannered gestures, so, and so he was portly and dignified, funny. I don't mean that as an insult, but yeah, yeah. No, you know, know what I'm exactly saying. What and, and that's what this does. Oh, it carries its weight. Rather than, it's like when you watch Jackie Gleason dance. He's kind of yes. a fat guy. but oh, he's he, incredibly elegant. Yeah, yeah. same thing with uh, Oliver Hardy from Lawrence and Laurel and Hardy. You know, he, he, he was light on his feet, although he was not light on his feet, you know? And that's that's what this is. It's like watching Oliver Hardy dance down the stairs, you know? It's very funny. Speaking of that, I used to open for the Nicholas Brothers. You remember them? Oh, gosh, yes. <laughs> I mean, that's real acceleration, isn't it? That is. That is indeed. This is, you know, the ultimate crossover vehicle. You can haul lumber, you can do anything with it. You know, the idea is now our roads are beyond repair. They're so bad. Why not just make vehicles that are strong enough to, to drive on them now? Like well, this just pounds the road into submission, this thing. You know, it's 10,000 pounds. Just, you go over a bump and it, that bump will be flattened if you get enough of these on the highway. Well, it's, uh, you're absolutely right, however, I prefer one of two things. That either we should fix the roads, or if we're going to crush the roads into submission, <laughs> we can do it in a 55 Roadmaster instead. Well, that's true. That's true. <laughs> but, you, is, you know, it's funny. We drove this thing. And people, why do you take it off-road? Because, you know, 99% of these will never go off-road. It's like most SUVs. But women like these things they're big they're safe there's a sense of security if you have children or something and it, it's like running it into a bank vault you know i mean there's no proof that bigger cars are safer but psychologically they are so this would, in that case this would be the ultimate safe vehicle and you do have all the airbags and all the safety equipment so it's a it's an impressive effort it's taken a, a vehicle i didn't care for at all and was embarrassed by into something I would actually want to own. A nice, safe family car. A Hummer. Who knew?